I was to use these this driver for each and each and every single display that we're using in our clock. It would make my computer really, really slow. Maybe maybe I wouldn't be able to even work with it. <laughs> we're not gonna be using our design. <laughs> Little did I know that I would be getting into this. When I was in bed the other day, I was tossing and turning. I wasn't sure why. Then it hit me. I must. I must make this clock from scratch. Well, not really from scratch because we are using flip-flops and logic gates. We know that flip-flops themselves are made from logic gates. And we know that logic gates are made from transistors. But still. This clock doesn't use any complicated ICs. You see, Terry Davis once said, an idiot admires complexity, but a genius admires simplicity. And I admire this design simplicity. <laughs> so wait a minute. Jonathan, are you saying you're a genius? No, I never said that. <laughs> Jokes aside, this is a good quote by the late Terry Davis. I don't know much about him. All I know is that he made Temple OS and he was a gifted programmer. It's too bad he developed schizophrenia later in his life. But anyways, back to the digital clock. And by the way, this video will be released in 4K because there is no other way I can clearly show this circuit. Um, if I try to record in 1080, the lines become blurry. So maybe in, in 4K, for those who have a 4K monitor, we'll be able to see the, the lines very clearly. And you might even be able to take a screenshot and uh, recreate this circuit yourself. But back to the conversation about simplicity. So it turns out after, you know, careful consideration and my best attempts to make this um, digital clock as simple as possible, I have achieved such things. And I, I have made it as simple as possible, that is. Okay, so let's go through it quickly. I don't want to spend too much time on the theory here. So, here on the rightmost, we have the seconds. And so, if we look at um, this display here, we see that this section actually uh, counts from 0 to 9. And then this bottom, and, and this is 0 to 9 of the seconds, of course, right here. And you can tell my computer is pretty slow because it's so damn big. And if you look at the one, this circuit down here, this actually counts from 0 to 5 because this is the second digit of the second. So you only ever reach 59, the highest. So that's why this driver is slightly simpler than this one. Okay, so you will also notice that this is basically repeated. This whole section is basically repeated for the minutes. And that's because the minutes also go from 0 to 59. So I can repeat them. And all I need to do is make sure that I wire them up correctly such that the seconds trigger the minutes. In addition to that, Let's talk about these flip-flops. You'll notice that there's one missing right here. In this space here. And the reason that is, is because we don't need it. If we're counting from 0 to 5, 3 bits is plenty. You know, but if we're counting from 0 to 9, we're going to need the 4 bits from these 4 flip-flops. So, yet again, I'm saving... Mm, Basically, I'm saving money by, by making it such. And then it, this is even more the case, more so the case for the hours because the second digit of the hours, right, goes from 0 to 12. Well, the whole, the whole hours go from 0 to 12, but the second digit on the hours simply goes from 0 to 1, right? This display here, this is the hours, by the way. And this, these two go from 0 to 12, but this leftmost one just simply switches back and forth from 0 to 1. So I only need one bit for this one. And then the, 
the other display here, the rightmost display of the hours, is basically 0 to 9, and I, I need it like that, so I need to have all, all four of the flip-flops. And likewise with the driver, I need the full driver. And then I have the switches here that let me control the minutes and the hours and the seconds. So this is an adjustable. So not only is this the simplest solution for a digital clock, but this is also an, adjust an adjustable digital clock. All right, so let's go ahead and run this thing so we can test it. And one of the things you'll notice is that it's actually pretty slow. And my guess is that there's a, a lot of things going on in the simulation because I'm manually, I guess you could say I'm manually, I'm manually uh, setting all of these, um, all of these bits such that the uh, display reads the correct number. I'm um, typically, if I, if, if I have a display that has an integrated um, driver, it doesn't, uh, it displays the number quickly. So if you look here at the second on the top right, you'll see that sort of, as you see that, it's sort of, uh, it's like it's checking each one of the segments and then it's turning them on or, or off depending on the signal that's coming in. So it's it's checking them one by one. And you see there, there was just a little bit of lag because it was moving on to the next digit, which is uh, 20. So it went from 19 to 20 and it, it took a little bit of a processing. Seems like it has to go through each and every one of the bits. But, you know, this still works. And it's completely functional. And actually, if you build this in real life, you wouldn't get this delay. Okay, so actually, I've uh, taken the liberty to add a couple more logic gates here on the left-hand side. And it's going to be so that... Um, adjustable aspect of this clock is you know more robust because if the if the, if the seconds reached a certain number along with the minutes reaching a certain number then it would freeze the adjustability of the clock the clock would, would still work fine it's just that i wouldn't be able to adjust it until after it um passes that point where i can actually adjust it but um it's working now so we're gonna what we're gonna do is here is i've adjusted the clock to 1258 and if i adjust the minutes by one more right here so let's go ahead and just zoom in a little bit so i'm gonna adjust the minutes by one here and okay so there it is i've adjusted the minutes to 12 as well the, the clock to 1259 so now we have to wait until the clock reaches one and so and by the way obviously this the clock doesn't run exactly doesn't run precisely with the real time but um okay so here it goes <laughs> you see that it is a little bit slow, but you know it's still working and it's producing. You know after it passes that um, that sort of um, transient stage, I guess you could call it, where it's uh, flipping bits in the display, it actually displays the correct number. And you saw for for, for a moment there, it said one o'clock. You know right after it was twelve fifty nine. So it's working nicely. All right, so I don't want to drag this out any further, so I'm going to end it here. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up. If you learned a thing or two about digital clocks, please consider subscribing. And thanks for watching.